In this tutorial, we're going to take the fleur de -lis model we created in the previous example and create the tool paths to be able to cut this out on a CNC machine. To start this video off, we're going to go ahead and open up our model that we created in the last video. That's the fleur de -lis model. So we're going to go to open. We're going to navigate over to our tutorials folder in our fleur de -lis file in the fleur de -lis files. And we're going to go ahead and select this guy right here and we're going to open that up and we will be presented with our 2d view which has our vectors and also our bitmap representations of our components that we made last time if we look at our modeling tab we can see all of the different components that we made and the levels that we made and now the best way to look at this is going to be to tile our view vertically. So we have our 2D view on our left and our 3D view on our right. And this will help us to see what's happening when we create our tool paths. Now is the time to take a couple minutes to think about how you're actually going to cut this. So in this particular case, we are going to use two different tool paths. We're going to use a roughing pass, which is going to use a large cutter to remove the lion's share of the material. And then we're going to use a smaller cutter to go back in to reveal our details. And we're also going to isolate this to a oval. And the oval that we're going to use to do that with is this oval right here. We already had this one drawn when we created our 3D components so that made sense to use that if we didn't have that we'd either have to draw one or have the software draw one for us but we're lucky enough to have one already there there's two different ways to get your to your toolpath options we can go ahead and use this button right here to switch to our toolpaths tab and we can use this button to switch back to our drawing tabs or we can hover over top of the toolpaths label over here and out will pop our toolpaths tab and we can pin it down. Now the benefit of this is that you get to see both tabs at the same time, but it does cover up part of your 3D view. So we can just go ahead and re-click arrange views vertically and that will clean that up for us and everything is all sorted out. Now the first thing we we'll always do when we go to cut a 3D component is we're gonna check our material setup. So we're gonna go and click the set button and review all of these different settings. So first of all, we'll make sure that our thickness of our material is correct. It's always good to go measure your material and make sure that is correct. In this case, it is. We can choose where we want our tool to start. And in my case, generally, I like to start in the middle. Uh, some people like to start at the bottom corner. It's totally up to you, whatever you're most confident. We're going to zero off the top of our material. And in a lot of cases, when you're cutting a 3D component like this, you're gonna to wanna to add a slight gap to the top of your model. And what this will do is it'll take into account if you have any imperfections on the top of your board that you're gonna cut into or the material you're gonna use. Not often are they perfectly flat. So if you go ahead and drop this down 0.05 of an inch, You'll see that it's represented in the in this little 3D icon here, but also it will plunge down a little bit so that we'll go by any sort of imperfections in your wood surface. Uh, your rapid Z gaps, uh, we're gonna leave those at a quarter inch. The clearance is it will your tool will move up to the 0.25, a quarter inch above your material, and then move around. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that takes into account any hold downs you may have or anything that might be in the way. And our plunge, again, is going to go up to a quarter inch, move over, and then plunge down. And that move up will be a quarter inch, which is perfectly fine for what I do. My home position is going to be at zero, zero, and it's going to start a quarter inch above my material right from the get-go. So that's perfect. Click OK. Now let's move on to our roughing pass. So we're going to use a 3D roughing toolpath. And we're going to start out by selecting our tool. So we'll click select. That will bring up our tool database. And from here, we can select any one of these tools that we'd like to. But in our case, we are going to use uh, an imperial tool. It's going to be a quarter inch end mill. And I don't need to change any of these settings. Even if I did and I selected apply, it would always apply it to that tool. There are ways to temporarily make an adjustment to your tool for this one tool path, and this isn't particularly the way you should do that. So we're going to select that. Now if I was going to make some temporary changes, for instance, my feeds and speeds, I could click the edit button, 
And any changes I make here would be temporary changes and would only be taken into account for this particular toolpath. But I'm not going to change anything there, so we're just going to click OK. I'm only going to go over the toolpath operations that are required to cut this particular job. If you're interested in any of the other options that I skip over, have a look at the actual help file or there are other videos that can help you with those. So we have an option of either choosing to machine the model boundary, the material boundary, a selected vector, or a selected level. In this particular case, I'm going to use the selected vector, which is already selected in my 2D view because it's indicated as being purple. A boundary offset. What this will allow the toolpath to do is actually go slightly outside this line and it will help to account for the tool dimensions. If, if I didn't have that in there, our tool would ride right along that line and if it was a ball nose or if it was any kind of other shaped cutter, it would end up leaving some material and it wouldn't ride over and finish off the cut right. So typically what we do is we put in the same a boundary offset as our tool is. So we're going to put in a quarter inch. The machining allowance is going to be an extra thin layer of material that we're going to leave behind so that we can go back with our finishing tool and we can clean that off to reveal our detail. We have a couple different options for our roughing strategy and that's how we're actually going to remove the material. So we have a z-level roughing which is almost like 2D pockets that are going to work its way down based on the pass depth that you've defined in your tool and it's much faster than doing the 3D raster which actually does a 3D toolpath that contours over back and forth across your model. In our case we're going to use the z-level. We're going to profile at the last step. So we're going to do all of our roughing and then we're going to go around once and profile around the other side that to clean up the edges. And we have a couple different options here, level by level or depth pass. We're going to go level by level, but if we had two different components or two pockets that we needed to make sure the material was removed in order, one pocket, the other pocket, back to the first pocket, back to the other pocket, then we could go ahead and use depth first. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to use level by level. We're going to raster along the X. Of course, you can change that direction if you'd like. We don't need to reverse those directions. It's fine just the way it is. We're not going to use any ramps. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to change that name to just 3D roughing. And we'll calculate that. And then we're going to go ahead, like always, and we'll preview our visible tool paths and we'll see what we have. And you can see how it's going down in pockets to reveal a nice roughing here. And that would do it fairly quick and it will work out really quite nicely. So that's perfect. Let's close that down. The next thing we're going to do is going to be our 3D finishing toolpath. We'll click that. We're going to go ahead and use a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill, which again, we can select a different one if we would like, or we can edit those settings temporarily if we want to. We're going to go with that just as it is. We're going to go ahead again and use our selected vector, but we have the other options that we talked about before. We're going to go outside of our boundary. We're going to go outside of that, at least the width of the tool. And we have a couple of different options here. We can use an offset, which will actually start in the middle and start to work its way out. Or we can do this in a raster fashion, which is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And with the raster, we can choose um, the angle that we'd like to do it at. So you might want to do that 90 degrees up and down or 45, whichever works best for you and the material you're cutting into. In this particular case, we're going to use offset, start from the middle and the way out, and just the shape of this actual oval will yield itself nicely to that. Now we're going to take a look at the step over retract. Now sometimes when you do a offset toolpath or offset strategy or use the offset strategy, you as it does one circle and it moves to the next, it leaves a little bit of a line and you'll have a radial line that kind of works its way out from the center to the border of your model. If that happens to you, you can alleviate that by putting in a slight step over retract. So it'll do one circle and then it, the tool will actually rise up a little bit, move out and plunge back down again. And you can do that using this particular option here. I'm not going to do that, but you may need to and it's always good to know that it's there. We're going to go ahead and change that to a 3D finishing and maybe we'll even put in the uh, 0.125 end mill so we know what size tool we're going to use and we'll calculate that. 
We'll just wait a second for that to happen. And then we're going to preview that visible toolpath again, and we'll see how it works from the inside out and cleans that up quite nicely. And that looks perfect. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually cut this out of the material itself. So we're going to use a profile toolpath. Now, there's all kinds of options in this profile toolpath um, dialog, but we're only going to go ahead and touch on the ones that we're going to use for this particular job. So we're going to start uh, at zero and we're going to go down the full depth of our material. And if we forget what it is, what the full depth of our material is, we can just type in the letter Z and press equals on our keyboard and it will go ahead and put in the thickness of our material. We do want to see our advanced toolpath option. So if you don't see some of these options showing up right away, make sure you click that. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. And if you want to, you can edit the number of passes. Now this is going to be calculated by the pass step that's set up with the tool. But if you decided that maybe you can be a little bit more generous, then you can go in here and change that pass depth if you would like. Uh, we're going to leave it the way it is, but you can go ahead and use these options to change that if you'd like to. Now we're going to go outside of the vector that we've chosen. We want to do that because we don't want to actually eat away at our component. If we went on the inside of that, of course, we'd actually cut away part of our border. If we went on the line, we'd cut away part of our border again, or only half of what we would have if we had to use the inside. But we want to use the outside that's safest for us. We're going to use climb. So that just defines the direction that our tool is going to move in. We can either do conventional or climb. By default, we're going to go ahead and use climb. There won't be any allowance offset. And we might want to do a separate last pass. This will help to alleviate some of the work you may need to do when you're finishing up the edge work. So your tool will work its way down and then it will step in a little bit and go ahead and the last pass it will clean up that edge for you. So we could do a separate last pass. We can make that a slight little bit, 0 0.02. And I can also tell it to go in the reverse direction on this last pass. And sometimes that will give you an even better finish. We're going to add some tabs in. Because we don't have a vacuum system, we need to have the tabs in. If you use double-sided tape or some other mechanism to hold your part in place, and you might not need tabs, but we will in this case. So we'll edit our tabs. These, the length and the thickness is fine for these particular ones. And we're going to use 3D tabs. Now, the important difference between using 3D tabs and not is that when you use a 3D tab, your tool is actually always going to be in motion. So it's got to go ramp up on top of the, the tab and ramp back down again. If you used a basic tab with straight sidewalls, then your tool actually will stay in one spot as it moves up and it could leave little dwell marks on the side of your final part. So if you can get away with 3D tabs, that might be a good option for you. We're going to edit our tabs. And we can tell the number of tabs we'd like. So let's just go ahead and choose four. We'll add in those tabs. We can move them around in the 2D view if we'd like, but I like them just where they are. So we're going to leave them. And we're just going to click Close. And then we're going to go ahead and profile that again. We may as well give it a, a name that reflects the tool that we're going to use. And we'll calculate that. And let's preview that visible toolpath. And you'll see that we have these nice 3D tabs in here. We've cut right to the edge of our components. And it looks really quite nice. Our border's all intact and everything looks perfect. Now all we need to do now is close this down and save off these toolpaths. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a tool changer, then you can go ahead and output all of your visible toolpaths. So if you turn these all on as one file but in my case I don't have a tool changer so I'm going to unclick that and I'll need to save them off one at a time and you'll see the toolpath listed there that I want to save off or I might be able to group a couple of them together if they happen to have the same cutter being used but in this case they're all a bit different and they all need to be done in a different order so I need to save them out one at a time using the proper post for my machine or my controller software and then open those up individually and run them one at a time. You should check over all of these tool paths to make sure that they're using the right tool that you have in your library. Also that every, all the feeds and speeds are safe and appropriate for your machine and the material that you're using before you even attempt to cut this.